It's a big game because it's the next game. And, you know, people didn't believe in that philosophy that we came up with as an organization, one week, one game at a time. And every game is, is the biggest game this season that we have because it's all about the bigger picture. Um, we want to be undefeated in the ACC. It's about championships. It's about the standard we set around here as an organization. So to have this great opportunity to face Syracuse, which is a pretty good team in my opinion, uh, and to wrap up the ACC as undefeated, that'll be big time for us. Um, Syracuse is known as obviously having big bruising running backs, having a good offensive line. This year is the same. They got a running back who's a big bruising guy, a lot of kind of like Andre Williams. Do you guys like facing this and talk about the challenge of facing a running back like this? It's a challenge for us because if 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 you want to be dominant in this game of football, you have to be able to pull out the physical wins. You know, a lot of teams go to spread, but when you see the Miamis and the Boston Colleges and the Syracuse where you have to actually play 60 minutes of physical football and to be able to pull a victory out, it says a lot about you and your standards and, you know, that you can match up with all kinds of football teams across the country. So this will be a big statement game for us, you know. How much do you relish this opportunity, too? Because not to bring up any, you know, future bad memories, but you only have two games to play here in your career, two games at home. Is it kind of like you're just like, oh, man, I can't believe it's already here? You know, uh, I'm a big believer in always. Like I said, life is progress to me. So, uh this is just a level that I was blessed to be on, and I expect to, you know, do bigger and better things in my life. So I think, I, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. I'm, I'm living the moment, and I'm just going with the floor of everything, just doing what I can do while I'm here, because I won't be here for long, and I understood that walking into college. So it's very special for me just because I get to be a part of this team and be coached by Coach Fisher, but I know this won't last forever. So I, I kind of just try to take things into perspective and look at it from a realist perspective like you know you can't do this forever but it's special though it's real special we're honoring the uh, 1993 national championship team this weekend you were probably maybe two years old or three years old when it happened so you probably don't <laughs> at least remember a ton about it but you know na names like a Derek Brooks or a Warwick Dunn or a Charlie Ward when you hear those names you know what kind of mental image does that bring up I mean you're talking about legends you know that, that, that played here that really set the standard I just want to I know those guys get a lot of thank yous and congratulations but if I can just take my heart out and put it in the, and let them know just the gratitude I have for them because a lot of people pay dues and debts for young guys like myself to be here. And for those, for those guys to do special and accomplish things like that and we're pursuing that, it, it's just so special. And I just wish I can get a hug from all those guys and tell them how, how thankful I am for the opportunity and for the bar that they set around this program for guys like me and a lot of other guys to have the opportunity to be able to follow in their footsteps. It's, uh, Xavier gets drafted in the first round. It seems like no problem. P.J. Williams comes in, steps in. Guys get hurt. Uh, Tyler gets hurt. Terrence gets hurt. It seems like no problem. We'll just put Jalen back there. We'll put Nate back there. What has allowed these young guys to come in in, in difficult situations and spots and seem like not miss a beat? It all comes from the head leader, Coach Fish. Um, he has done a great, tremendous job in the past with recruiting. As you see, the last past three, four years, we had top five, top ten recruiting classes, and he set a standard around here. Um, I mean, that's the kind of guys we recruit. So when, when you're inside this organization, you understand that these guys are being recruited to fill shoes like the EJs, the Xavier Rose, the Tank Carradines, you know, so you expect young guys to fill those shoes. So when they do it, it's no surprise because these are the kind of kids you're recruiting, the kind of talent, the kind of character that you're recruiting. So it's like, this is what we expect around here, and it's the standard that we set. I know Coach Fisher and Coach Pruitt have both said, at least before the season started, the best player will play regardless of, of age. Do you see that in practice from these young guys that's thinking, you know, you know, hey, if I go out here and play well, I can I can beat out a Marcus, I can beat out a, a Terrence, and I can get myself on the field? Yes, and that's that's the mentality these young guys have. You you see it in spring when the, with the early enrollees, you see it in fall counts where guys are just competing. And that gets the older guys better because you know that the best players are, are going to play. So you have to do your job. And not only do your job, help these younger guys to get on your level. And that's how you build a dynasty because you, it, you don't miss a beat when a, a guy like Terrence Brooks or myself go down or a younger guy beat us off the depth chart. I mean, it's no hard feelings because you understand that's the standard around here. So it keeps everyone on their toes. And, you know, we're having a lot of success with that mentality around here.